Hello, hi, how's it going? Me? I don't know. Woke up, my voice was... Oh man, it was rough. But let's get into it. So the topic of today's video is image-based lighting. And um, in principle, it's quite straightforward. So I'll just load this up so we can see where we are at the start point of this session. So what I've done is I've removed some of the, well, actually removed all of the anti-aliasing because I thought it looked cleaner without it. And just give it a second to up res. And yeah, this is the scene. This is a situation. What I want to do is I want to set it up so that I can put an image behind and have that image illuminate the scene. Now, the concept is quite straightforward. At the moment, it's actually the white sky which is illuminating the scene. So when a ray hits a sphere, it will bounce off and a lot of those rays will hit the sky and then we get white times this color and that's producing it. We can actually show that by going into the shader and modifying the um, default color. So if we go down here, here we are. Okay. So if we go to this and modify this so it's red, then in principle, everything should become red. I'm just gonna just pop back here, give this a shot. In reality, it doesn't become red, or at least um, not always. It's a little bit weird. So we just need to go back and see how we have this early exit test, but then we modify it. Let's take it so that no matter what, we're always taking the render state color because now we have a meaningful default. Anyway, give that another shot. And indeed, now the sky is red and all of the spheres will be tinted with that. Okay, so I noticed we were having some graphical issues and that is, well, if the sky is red and it's coloring everything, then what's with these random other colors? What does this random green, this random blue and stuff? And the issue is that these rays are bouncing continually between these two spheres and they are never interacting with the sky. So they've overrun their uh, bounce limit and we haven't hit a terminal case. Um, that's an error, and we can improve that by improving the number of bounces in the engine, but also there's a quick fix to that, and that is a termination test after we perform the bouncing. So we declare that we have a render state, and then we populate it, and then we keep going, so this runs four times, and then if we get to the end, and our final render state was in a state of having hit something, then we say, hey, this ray has run out of energy and we'll just send it off to, uh, to zero. So we can give this a shot. And now, as you can see, that, uh, that error is gone, as it should be. So now the question is, Clearly, whatever we put in the sky colors the scene. So all we need to do is get a, a sky cube of something and uh, put it in there and we should be good to go. So turns out I have one of those from one of my other projects I loaded in. We have this sky box. It's been partitioned into its sections. We simply need to load it in. So I'll start on the shader side. That'll be easy enough. So I'll just go up the top, underneath the textures, and we'll declare this uh, sampler cube. 
and this is a cube map texture. So the way a cube map texture works is when you sample it, you input a VEC3, which is a direction, doesn't have to be normalized, just a direction vector. And then the, the sampler says, okay, well, if you're looking in this direction, this is the part of the sky that you'll see. So we can go down to the, yeah, the trace function. And then here, instead of setting this to red, we can set it by sampling. And that's it. That's as simple as it is. Of course, we do then need to send that data in. So what I'll do is I'll just, I'll make a new file. I'm going to call it materials. And later on, I might add more materials, more textures and things, but, um, this will work for now. And let me just check in config, what are we doing? Okay, we probably don't need heap queue. Um, we'll just go. So I'll load an image library. And you could say, hey, wait a second, you've got Pygame here. Pygame's an image library. Well, well, we want to sort of move away from Pygame towards GLFW. It has more accurate mouse movement. That's been the subject of a whole other video. Point is, um, I want to rely on a different image library because I may not have Pygame's image library to rely on. So we have that. Let's go over to the materials and I'll just declare this okay so no worries so we're going to generate a texture and declare that it is a cube map binder as the current cube map to operate on. So at this point, I'm going to start copy pasting because there's a lot of code, but basically what we'll do is we will set the, the properties just the same way we would on any texture. And then we want to start loading in the images. So this cube map has six images and they get loaded in a certain order. So I'll just run through the first one. So we, we append left.png to the file name, as we can see here, it'll be, you know, back, bottom, front, left, right, top, and so on. Okay, and then we get the size, we convert it. And as I've said many times, what this conversion does is it fills in any missing channels. So if we haven't got an alpha channel, it'll add an alpha channel just because it's easier to have a uniform data layout. Um, and we convert it to a bytes object. And then we load to the negative Y image. Let's load all that stuff. There we go. And that is the left image. So then we just keep doing this many times. I know it's a little bit overwhelming. Um, in some cases we'll need to perform operations because the images won't be displaying properly. That is um, pretty much determined experimentally, but I think I've just about got it to the point where this will work for any cube map that I load in. But yeah, so we load the right, we set that as the positive Y image. And as, as always, link is in the, the description. Um, I mean, otherwise, what is it? I'm just talking a lot about texture things. Okay, so yeah, we load the top, found that I had to rotate that by 90 degrees. That goes onto the positive Z. And then on the negative Z, we have the bottom. No uh, flipping necessary there. Then the back is negative X. That involves a rotation again. 
and then finally the front has a rotation and it's positive Z, uh, positive X. But yeah, really standard stuff. Okay. Cool. So we've gone through and we've loaded in each of the six images for the cube map. Um, I'm going to give it as well a use function and why not? I'll give it a destroy function as well. Okay, excellent. Now I'm binding this to texture unit four because the other three textures are used. So no worries. I'll just go over to my engine and then we are almost done. Okay, so we'll import that and then I'll be super quick and, and dirty on the bottom here and I'll just, we'll just go with it. So I'll go self, Now what I'm doing here is I'm specifying that this will be texture unit four, um, because in the other in the other uniforms I was able to set the the binding by hand, but here I'm going to set it from the program. Okay, but yeah, otherwise that is it. I'll just go down to the prepare scene function. And this is where I'm sending in all my stuff. So at this point, we'll go. Okay, good. Ah. Oh. Side note, her um her brother passed away recently, which is very sad. But she's been spending a lot of time with me because of that. Because there are other cats in the neighborhood. He used to chase them away, but now she just hangs around with me because the other cats fight her. Um, okay, so let's get, let's see if this worked. And there we have it. It looks very nice. Very nice indeed. I don't know. I think that's nice. I think that's cool. Uh, it's almost like Christmas balls. Hey, it's almost Christmas time. There's some. There's a, this is a Christmas themed video, by the way. Uh, yeah. I don't know, because I was starting to see some of these things, some of these images online, and I thought, wow, that looks so cool, image based lighting. But um, yeah, and I thought, hey, it's such an easy thing to implement. Why not go for it? Anyway, so there's, there's my rant over. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned some stuff. And I don't know, ray tracing is cool. Isn't it amazing how um, such a simple thing can bring in details? Well, anyway, that's enough from me. Have a good one, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.